Hi everybody, this is my third video on Antarctica. As you are aware, Antarctica is the landmass in the southern hemisphere, 60 degree south of equator. I have been traveling through quark expeditions on their ship Ocean Diamond for a 10 day trip to Antarctica. We went to the Antarctic Peninsula. The daily program of the ship is a lecture and the daily briefing followed by a Sodia cruise to the Southern Ocean waters then going to the Antarctic Peninsula proper, watching the flora fauna, doing some scientific experiments and coming back to the ship. After lunch, again there is a lecture session. Then on the second round, Sodia cruise through the ocean. and comes back by the evening. Then there is a daily recap of the things what we do, what we did in today. Then dinner is served and there is a bar story. Bar story is the story by the veteran sailors of the ship. This is a daily program for 10 days. This is the Antarctic continent and Southern Ocean surrounds it. It is 60 degree south latitude. Let me briefly tell you about the history of exploration of Antarctic continent. The known history of Antarctica starts with the 15th century Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan but he never came to Antarctica he came to Terra del Fuego archipelago on the southern part of South America during his circumnavigation around the world in 1773 Captain James Cook came to this place Antarctic Circle which is 66 degree south and came further down to 71 degree south but he never spotted the Antarctic continent per se. In 1820 Fabian Bellinghausen was the first person to spot the Antarctic Peninsula. In 1821 John Davis, an American sealer in his ship Cecilia, was the first person to land on this Antarctic Peninsula. At that time, sealing and whaling industry was flourishing in the Southern Ocean. And there was a lot of ships in this place hunting whales and seals for oil. In 1898, Adrian Gerlache, Adrian Gerlache was the person who in his ship Belgica came to Antarctica but his ship was stuck in ice and he had to spend around 377 days in Antarctica till the ice melted and he could get out of the southern sea. He was the first person to winter over in Antarctica. What is winter over? Winter over is spending a winter in the Antarctic soil. But the interest to reach South Pole grew exponentially. In 1902, a British expedition by 
Robert Falcon Scott in his ship Discovery came all the way to 82 degrees south. But he could not reach South Pole. Later in 1909, Sir Ernest Shackleton in his voyage to Antarctica came all the way up to 88 degrees south, just 180 kilometers away from South Pole. But due to the dwindling food supply, he could not go further to South Pole, but he returned back. In the 1911, December 14th, Roald Amundsen, a Norwegian and his friends, was the first person to reach the South Pole, that is 90 degrees south. He, along with his friends, erected the Norwegian flag in the South Pole. And what, that was the greatest moment in the history of Antarctica. Our first port of entry to Antarctica was Southern Shetland Islands, the HO Group and Barrientos Island. From there, we sailed to the Antarctic Peninsula, which is the Antarctic continent proper. Barrientos Island to Antarctic continent proper is around 120 kilometers. In the first day, we went to go through the Weddell Sea and go to the Paulet Islands. Paulet Islands got a lot of historical significance attached with the early Antarctic explorers. But unfortunately, even in December, the big flakes of snow floating in the water, the Weddell Sea prevented us going further and to the Powlett Island. So we have to abandon that and get back to the Graham Island region of the Antarctic Peninsula. We went to so many places like Wilhelmina Bay, Dango Island, Coorville Island, then finally to Peterman Island, which is 65 degree south. And each island has got its own special features and its own unique sites. Naturally, you will be asking at me, what are the things you even now remember? Two other most important things happened in my Antarctic journey was one, a camping in the Coorville Island, two, a polar plunge. I will detail you about the camping in Coorville Island. Actually, the Antarctic journey is designed in such a way that you spend the night or the so-called night in Antarctica in the ship and the, in the day you cruise and see the sights around. Though when we go there during the austral summer of southern hemisphere, there is no night as such. That's around 20 to 22 hours of sunlight and sunshine every day. Technically, we can call that as night. And the camping on an island is an optional one. If you, if you opt for that, you will be taken to an island and you can stay a night in the Antarctic 
snow perfect so on the day of our camping in the afternoon we were all assembled in the lecture room and was given a total briefing of what is going to happen and what things are to be taken and what are the protocols to be followed first and foremost thing is that there are two options of sleeping in kurville island either you can offer a bivy bag that is a sleeping bag where you can sleep inside on bare snow or else you can offer a tent for two people sleep in the tent but you have to put the tent that's all i opted for the bivik bag setup then a bivik bag was provided to us and how to do with the bivik bag you can open the bivik bag and there are sleeping liners can be put inside and the bivik bag is folded in such a way that it will look like a small pillow and is very light to carry that is the advantage of bivik bag and it can withstand a temperature up to minus 20 then another most important point is that you you are not supposed to take any food to the antarctic waters or antarctic soil it's a big no no because antarctic area is a pristine environment and by food you may unknowingly introduce foreign stuff to the pristine environment which will later land the area into a calamity so under no circumstances food can be taken into the antarctic islands only thing you should carry yourself is water the quark expedition team will provide you with a aluminum water bag which can hold up to 1 liter of water it is a specially designed bag that is the only thing you should carry another thing is that there is no restroom facility in the kurville island hence if possible skip your dinner or else take a very light dinner so that your urge to go to toilet won't be there in the morning and there is a small facility for going to the loo but it is better that if it could be avoided the best so don't drink too much water these are the standard precautions advised and at 8 o'clock at night or else the so called night we were taken to the island on a zodiac it's a half hour cruise from our ship to the island when we reached on the island and docked our guides are already there you are marking the area for our stay at night though the shore is devoid of snow our camp area is having a knee length loose snow it is just like loose soil it's very difficult to walk with the the boots on the moment you enter into the island you are provided with a plastic sheet on the first i did not understand what this uh, plastic sheet is for but i collected one and uh, there is a there is a well marked area where anywhere you can put up your place of sleep 
I opted for a for a place hundred meters up a small hill and hope to put the BB bag there. BB bag bag can't be put on a loose no. First you have to make a pit with a shovel about six feet long and two feet wide so that you can put the mat on the hard surface of the ground and can over which you put the BB bag and sleep. That is how you make the area suitable for your sleep. It's, it's a Herculean task to dig the snow out because you are wearing gloves. One glove is there and over which there is a thick leather gloves. And uh, to shovel the snow with all this snow is, is, is indeed difficult. It is just like putting the boxing gloves in your hands. Your hands won't bend. Somehow I managed to make the pit and put the BB bag on top. Then all of us are invited for a briefing. Very important briefing, so to say. And we assembled together and the guide told us about the most important thing to be remembered on our camping in Kuruville Island. That is using the restroom. There is a small ice mound behind which there is a port is kept. This is where you avoid the urine and a flag is erected. If the flag is flying high, you can go there and avoid the urge. If the flag is down, presume that someone is using it and wait for your turn. That is it. Then we went around the island, had a few photographic sessions, saw the, the big rookeries or colonies of the Gendu penguins in the island, saw a few seals. We did not see any whales there. And at one o'clock, we all went to sleep. In the BV bag, the first and foremost thing is remove your boots before entering into the BV sack. That is the mammoth task to tell you the least because it's a single molded boots. It is very difficult to put your feet in and pull your feet out. With your hands in, is, is in, in gloves, it's almost impossible to do this simple activity. But in order to enter into the BB bag, you have to do it. Once you enter into the BB bag, you have to close the head region. There's a, a channels for breathing. And you can breathe normally, no problem at all. One thing they forewarned was there will be snowing at night and your uh, boots will get soaked and soggy. So have, you have to carry extra pair of socks with you. It's very difficult for me to get sleep in an unfamiliar environment that applies here also. I did not have even a wink of a sleep. The more I think about it, the more I feel like going to the toilet to avoid urine. Once I came out of the BV bag, the snows at night made the boots 
very slippery and very cold if you get into the boots once you come back you have to change the socks because it, it became so wet i went to the loop i did not feel like returning back because actually there's a loose snow and the it's snowing the loose snow again becomes more looser and is very difficult to walk but i was witnessing one of the finest spectacle in the horizon actually it was a twilight like setting where one area the sun was setting and another sun was rising sunset and sunrise in the same frame is an unusual thing to witness i have never seen anything like that in my lifetime such a glorious spectacle that was happening in the horizon there was no stars because there's a light over there but the moon definitely was there i watched it for a half an hour and then i just walked around it was such a beautiful night to witness i will never ever forget in my lifetime then i went back to my bivy back to get some sleep but the time i went into that sleep mode it was early in the morning and the time to depart the island the zodiac came yesterday to get us here has already left and it will come only in 7 o'clock in the morning to take us back to the ship but one or two most important events i still recall at most beauty is camping in coverville island definitely i like to highlight another memorable incident happened in the ship it was a polar plunge actually polar plunge is a tradition in scandinavian countries where during winter months they plunge into the icy frozen cold waters of the arctic so everybody is given an option those who are interested to take the polar plunge are most welcome to join i said already i have gone to camping in coverville island so i will why don't i do this also then they forewarn me actually the antarctic water is extremely cold freezing and it's not a joke to take a plunge in the antarctic waters i said fine i will go with the crowd okay then i was also taken to the lower deck from there you jump into the sea but there's a safety hook attached to your back in case of an emergency they will pull you back the gentleman just in in front of me jumped into the sea and swam back just like uh, swimming in a lake i said okay fine if you're so comfortable definitely i should also be i jumped into the water that is the only memory i have i just lost my memory and my heart suddenly stopped i went into an unconscious state i felt like i am going to another world 
just drowning. My hands and legs became stiff. They are not in the swim mode anymore. It took me few seconds to come out. With a jerk, I came to the surface and tried to swim. By that time, those people, the employees, knew there is something wrong. They pulled me through. The moment I entered into the deck, they covered me with a thick, warm blanket. It was the most frightening experience I ever had in my life. I never ever experienced such a thing before. I was 100% sure I was traveling to another world. And as the Borneum song goes, I am born again, I feel free. It was such a dramatic experience. I won't be able to forget in my lifetime. Another very funny thing also happened in the ship. It punctured my ego as a doctor. The first day on the ship, the doctor on board briefed us regarding the sea sickness and the Drake passage and advised us to take the medication for the seasickness. But I said, is it mandatory that I should take the medicines? Because I have been in a cruise before. I never felt like uh, any seasickness. Then the doctor smiled at me and said, of course, it's uh, your prerogative. If you are interested, you can take or else there is no need for that. And uh, see how you fare in this Drake shake, which is going to happen tomorrow. Is it perfect? Being an ED surgeon, being a doctor, I was supremely confident that seasickness won't happen to me. And in, in the morning, when I woke up, there was huge turbulence. And the ship was just like waving one side to the other. I felt like an urge to vomit a small nausea. But gradually it evolved into vomiting, vomiting and vomiting. It was non-stop. My roommate Danny got scared. He tried to call the doctor, but the doctor was very busy. Fortunately, the ship crew was exceptionally nice. They all came and put me on power drinks and saline. And it took me 24 hours to come out of this. It was such a frightening experience. And later on, I elaborated to the doctor. She was smiling and said, I also thought the same. I said, it is good to have a good puncture of your doctor ego. And you got it. I'm happy that you realized it now. When I came back from Antarctica, everyone asked, which is the most beautiful site you saw there? Definitely we know that Antarctica is pristine and beautiful everywhere. But which was the site you still remember? And etched in your memory. I said, definitely this Lamaya channel. Lemaire Channel in Antarctic Peninsula. Actually, it's a small passage around 11 kilometers long and 1,000 
600 meters wide and 150 meters depth. It is also called Kodak Cap because it's so beautiful. On either side, there are big mountains covered with snow. Throughout this 11 kilometers distance, and ice flakes are floating all around the water, and the sun reflects on the ice of the mountains and water being so narrow it displays a unique color which you will never ever see anywhere else in the world dazzling display of light and snow absolutely mesmerizing There is a time when you realize how the light can play on the eyes and the water and come out with colors which will stay in your memory for a lifetime. If you ask me the most memorable scenery of your Antarctic journey is of course cruising to the Lamaire channel was the most beautiful but unfortunately many a times this passage is blocked with ice so cruising through it on a ship becomes very difficult. So, you need to circumvent through the Graham's land to go further south. These are the some incidents I really cherish and to share with you. Hope we enjoyed it and in the near future if you are planning an Antarctic trip it will be useful to you thank you for watching this video take care and bye